Hey, welcome back to another What If Wednesday Inner Circle preview call. Super excited to be here. We're running late today because we had a ton of client meetings this week, a bunch of bad reviews. You've heard us talk about the bad on this, this preview show a number of times, and I'll put it up on the screen here for you again. If you want to go take the bad, I want to tell you a little bit about it and why it's been so impactful and why we've had so many this week. But before we get there, again, I am by myself. My brother, my partner in this business, Sean Delaney, is in other meetings, and he's actually scheduled to jump on here in just a few minutes. So before we get into that, um, let's review where we've been, the, the takeaways we've had, the stuff we've heard from the inner circle. I want to lay it all out there. Then we'll talk about the bad and where we're going this week. So this week, we're talking about operate again, which is our name for this traditional term of execution in business. It's how you get things done. How are you goal planning, goal setting, vision casting, whatever you want to call it? How are you breaking those tasks down to make sure your company as a whole is moving in the right direction and you are actually getting stuff done, but not just stuff done. Anybody can do stuff, right? How are we getting the right things done for your company, your vision, your mission, and how are your employees and your team members on the same page with you? So we're going to jump into that super, super important. And we've had a ton of revelations this week from, from our clients, from our inner circle members. And it's been so cool to see how people are setting their goals effectively so that they get done, not just picking big goals and putting them out there in the future, which I personally can't stand. So we want to break them down so that they're actually going to be done in your business. Now, before we get there, let's talk about the last few weeks. So we've been, we, we wrapped up Two weeks ago, the mission, vision, core values, the navigation section um, in our architecture and the harmonious architecture. And we moved on to operate last week. So in the inner circle, one of the takeaways, and this was on a, a private coaching call as well with one of our clients, one of the takeaways from that section was tears. And I don't mean bad tears. We make our clients cry, but only in the best way. And I'm proud of it too, Okay. So we made one of our clients connect so deeply with her why, which is the whole foundation of why she started her business. If you want to come on the inner circle, um, we're going to dive more into this. Whatif.com slash inner circle, get you all the information you need to get there. Um, again, if you take the bad, it's you have 30 days free of these mastermind calls, which we're previewing here, uh, but one hour calls once a week. We want to see you there. And we want to help you have these revelations at the same time. And that's what happens when you join our group. So what we were doing was we had to figure out, okay, she took the bad, her scores in the navigate section, the mission, vision, core values were uh, in the middle, middle of the road. It was like a 26 or 28, something like that. Um, and what we had to do was solidify the foundation of her business. That's what, that's what that section is. So if you build a house on dirt, there's a pretty good chance it's going to fall over, right? But if you build a house on a 27 foot thick concrete slab, it will probably never go anywhere and you can build up really high. That's the whole point of this. If you think about that section of the harmonious architecture as the foundation of your business, it's what you can build on. And the important part is to realize is because that section navigate touches every single other discipline within our architecture. It is the only discipline that touches every other area and is so deeply ingrained in every other area that if it's not a 50 out of 50 on our assessment, we need to figure out how to get it there and get it there as soon as possible. So that's what we did. We sat down and we needed to completely redo the mission, vision, and core values for her company because she kind of knew them. They were documented somewhere in, in a Google Drive folder in outer space, but they weren't being lived out and embodied by her staff and her company. Her clients didn't know them and see them. And what we sat down to do was figure out, all right, you transitioned from a career you were super happy with, you were successful, it paid well, you started this company to fight an injustice in the world and you grew it to a 40 person company. That's not an accident. I understand you have a very deep why. Why don't I see that on paper? 
Why isn't that being lived out within your company? And why don't your employees know what that is? So we broke it down and we said, what was it? And I won't reveal that here, but we got to the point where she was able to break down in tears because over the course of the last five to seven years and just going about the day to day of her business, she forgot. And if you forget, your company for sure forgot. So that's what we did. We started there and then we can build the foundation on top of it. She was having a problem hiring. Well, your mission, vision, core values need to be woven into your job descriptions so that prospective candidates know what they're signing up for. If they don't know what kind of company you have, what your company's mission is, how that connects to their personal core values, whether they label them or not, it's does this job post resonate with me as a human being or does it not? And a lot of job posts that we see, and I'm sure you've even posted them this way, and I know I have in the past, you're just recruiting task rabbits. It's the list of duties and responsibilities that each of your employees are responsible for on a daily basis. And you list the salary and the benefits and you get a million applications. And then you have a team of people who you nonstop complain about because they're not good employees. Maybe you're not good at hiring because you didn't put this key information in the role. They signed up for a salary and benefits. You wanted team members who were chasing a vision. Those two things don't happen if you guys aren't on the same page. So we make our clients cry. We had a great revelation. We had a ton of ahas in the room last week talking about vision statements, crafting a vision statement, and how that helps your company move forward. And that vision statement can then be broken down into what we're going to talk about further this week, which is execution. So we're going to talk about how do you set up and write your goals in a way that they are achievable? Well, there's a process that we go through. We're going to go through it deeper in the room, but it's basically how do you take your, your yearly goals, break it down into quarterly goals, monthly goals, weekly goals, and then daily action steps. And those can also be created or crafted into your leading indicators. We've heard leading indicators, lagging in indicators. These are not new terms in business and we didn't come up with them. But a lot of people that I talk to, understand the difference between the two. They're rock solid. Like we don't need to, there's no education needed. It's leading indicator, lagging indi indicator. Awesome. Love it. What are your leading indicators? Oh, I have no idea. What do you mean you have no idea? You just told me you fully understood what those terms meant. And you're going to tell me you don't have any? That's what drives me insane with goals. Your goals drive your leading indicators. If you don't know what you're executing on, how you're doing it, the frequency with which you're doing it, how you're measuring it, where you're measuring it, who's responsible for it. You don't have purposeful growth. You have accidental growth or accidental decline in whatever department, whatever area of your business you're measuring. Revenue is the easiest number we all use for measuring the growth and success of our business. Well, if you don't know how you're accomplishing your goals and you don't have the leading indicators to get there, you will never effectively grow. And that's where we talked about this last week on both on the inner circle and on this preview call, which was if you don't tie your opportunities to your mission and your core values, you may be growing by accident, but also in a very wrong direction. And we talked about how that showed up in real life, in real time for Sean last week um, with his other company, BevGraph. But this happens with so many people. And are you doing this too? If you set a goal out to grow your revenue by 15%, and then you see this shiny object over here where you get the opportunity, put that in quotes, to chase this new line of business or this new revenue stream, side hustle, whatever you want to call it, and you don't verify that against the mission that we just talked about, the foundation, you could be taking your company completely off course into disaster. Who knows? You have to be able to look at that from both sides and say, is this an opportunity? Yes or no? Okay. If yes, does it offend our mission? Does this, is this in line with our core values? These are the things that we have to check on and constantly as entrepreneurs and leaders, more importantly, be aware of, because if we say to our team, okay, we are now chasing this new line of business. The example Sean always likes to use, which don't ask me why. It's kind of a weird example, but we love them for it. 
is, are we going to sell surfboards to cats? I don't have cats. I don't think they can really surf. So it's a weird example, but that's the point. It's an extreme example. If you say there's a revenue stream out there that is selling surfboards to cats or skateboards to dogs. Now I have seen those videos, so that might be a revenue stream. I'm not advocating for it. I'm just saying I've seen it. But if you think you can sell surfboards to cats, what's the market for that? All right. You can go through your whole market analysis. If you're a McKinsey consultant out there, you can come up with a lot of pretty numbers of why that would be a good revenue stream. Verify it against your mission. What's your company vision? If you sell scented candles, why would you sell surfboards to cats? Again, two extreme examples, but that's what we're talking about here. And every single day, we as entrepreneurs have these opportunities. We scroll through Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and TikTok, and we see ads and they're pretty. And we're like, oh, I could sell that in my business. Or, oh, I should sign up for this course. Oh, I should take this mastermind. Drives me insane because we are not looking at why we are in business. We have totally lost the mission, not only of our companies, but of ourselves, because we're so scrambled and scatterbrained out here in the world as entrepreneurs that we just chase, 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 and we never sit down and focus. That's what this is all about. Your execution is about consistent, persistent focus. That's my personal motto for this year. I have been so scatterbrained in the past. This was the year I finally said, no, I need to stop. I need to get myself in line. If I'm ever, ever going to achieve a goal that I believe is worth achieving, it's going to take consistency, persistence, and focus, focused effort over a long period of time. And what did it take was breaking down that goal into smaller achievable action steps, not smaller goals, actual action steps and leading indicators. I'll give you an example that other people have used in the past, um, but this is something I've personally done. So it's not a business goal. It's a personal goal. My, my personal health and fitness just was absolutely terrible last year. It was a crazy year in business. We were super busy. We grew by almost double and I was just all over the place. Now, what I did was I let my personal health just completely fall apart. I wasn't going to the gym. I wasn't eating right things started to fall apart, diseases started to pop up, all the things that we know can happen and we're warned about that do happen if you treat yourself that way. So I said, all right, this year I need to get back. I need to get back in shape. I need to do, I need to do things and, and put my health, maybe not first, but I need to prioritize it and make it important. So what did I did? I said, okay, I want to be able to have this type of uh, body. I want to have, I want this to be the kind of the weight that I'm in muscle mass, all these different things. So I established the goal. Fantastic. I have a goal. That's a big goal. How are you going to get there? I said, all right, what do I need to do? What are we broke down all the way? What are the action steps that I needed to take in order to achieve that goal? And what I came up with was I need to go to the gym at least five days a week. And I need to track the activities that I'm doing at the gym. And I do, I just do it on my phone. I have a Google sheet that I pull out when I'm at the gym every single day and I track line by line. What are the weights I lifted? What are the reps? What are the number of uh, the number of reps per set? And what is the weight that I did for that set? And I have these numbers and I can track it so I can go week by week. Every muscle group I have broken down on a different spreadsheet. So I can say, okay, last week I did 10 reps or I did three, excuse me, three sets of 10 reps at 25 pounds. This week, it better be three sets at 11 reps at 25 pounds, or I increase the weight, whatever that is. But I can see that I'm always moving forward. That to me is a leading indicator. I know that if I hit this metric, the timeline that I set for my goal will happen. That's a health example, not a business example. We do that for your business. That's the whole point of all this. So we break down your goals into smaller goals, into action steps that become leading indicators that you know if you hit them, you will with almost absolute certainty reach the goals that you want to reach. That is the important part of execution. A lot of people stop at just setting goals. If you stop there, you'll just have a list of pretty goals. And I actually have these. I, I, we're going to share these 
um, on the inner circle, if not this week, then next week, when we really dive deep into goal setting and, and time blocking, um, time blocking is a bad word, breaking down into action steps, your goals for especially next year. So within the next couple of weeks, we'll share this. But when we do that, I want to I want to show you my goals. I have I have them on Google Docs and I've broken them down. Um, or I, I didn't break them down, excuse me, in the past. I just had pretty statements on paper. And sometimes I got them, sometimes I didn't. And there was never any consistency or predictability for how I would get there and achieve those goals. Well, obviously, I didn't break it down into what I needed to do. If it was achieve a million dollars in revenue, okay, how? what are the 97 million things I need to do and the company needs to execute so that we get there? What are the leading indicators for my business? None of those are written down. It is completely up to chance at this point. Now, a lot of people will talk about the art of manifestation. And if you put things out in the world and you put things on your pretty vision board, you'll get them. That's not really true. In my opinion, I've never seen that work with scientific accuracy. I think it's true. I mean, sometimes people get what they want because they just manifest it in the world. But if you're running your business and you're a leader that focuses on manifestation of goals, you are crazy. That's my that's my stake in the ground on this one. If you don't break your goals down into leading indicators that you can convey to your team, you have not gone far enough, you won't reach your goals, and your company will not reach the level of success that it could. That's why I think it's so important to be talking about this, and that's why we're talking about it this week. We have two months before the end of the year and the start of 2024. With everything that's going on in the world, we foreshadowed and predicted a recession it wasn't that hard because we were already in one, even though the uh, politicians and the news media didn't want to acknowledge it. We had a challenge on how to re recession proof your business a couple of months ago. It was a phenomenal success. We had a lot of people get great takeaways from that. We're going to be running more workshops like that in the coming weeks before the end of the year so that you can set yourself up for real sustainable and predictable growth in 2024. The economy is in the worst shape it's been in probably the last decade and a half, regardless of what the media says, regardless of what the politicians say, you know it is, you see the inflation numbers, you see your bank account, and you see your business revenue and your business bank account. If you want to argue with me on that, I'd be happy to come on the inner circle. We're going to be talking about that in the next for, for the next coming weeks. This is real. We have a way to show you how to grow your business, scale your business sustainably, predictably, and efficiently without you pulling your hair out. That's what we're talking about here. So I'm going to keep beating on this drum of effectively setting goals and setting leading indicators because that is the core of the execution discipline. So we're going to jump into the inner circle in a few minutes. Again, if you want to, if you want to get your 30 days free of the inner circle, Jump on over here, take the bad, whatif.com slash bad. It'll bring you to, or if you go, just actually go to whatif.com, it's right there. Um, that's the screen you should be taken to. Um, if you want to learn more about the inner circle, there's a link on that page, or you can go to whatif.com slash inner circle. And let me tell you why I'm so passionate about this before we wrap this up and jump on over in there um, for the next hour with our clients. I was on a mastermind call yesterday, actually, another group that I'm part of, and it's um, it's it's a valuable group. There's a lot of good relationships in there, and I think that's the great part about masterminds is you're able to meet so many different people from different walks of life, different businesses, different scales of business. And I, I love that part of the connection in the group like that. Here's my problem. This group, like a lot of them, claim to be able to help you grow your business. So uh, a woman got up and she was able to, or she asked a question and she actually directed it at me because I was speaking prior to that. And she said, okay, here's the situation in my business. Um, what would you do if you were in this situation? And I said, I don't know. I have no clue. And the reason I said I have no clue is because she hadn't taken this assessment. This is where we start with all our clients. And I, like I said, we're late to this preview, this live stream, because I was on a review call with some more clients going over their diagnostic results. Um, and that's a free thing. It's hundred percent free. You get the hour review session with me. Um, and you get 30 days free in our mastermind so we can actually implement the solutions that we come up with. And I was so frustrated on this call yesterday because 
I said, I don't know because you haven't taken this. And then I say, here's why I'm going to say, I don't know. All of these pieces are connected. Everything builds off each other. And the secret to growing your business and understanding the harmonious architecture is understanding how everything links. They're not 10 siloed departments of a business. They're 10 interconnected disciplines that make up a spider web of how you scale your business. So you can't just say, oh, you need to go do this or do that. So I gave her that answer and she loved it. And I want to bring my, my brother Sean on the screen here. What's up? I'm almost, I'm in the middle of a story that you're going to appreciate. And then I want to bring you on before we jump in the middle circle or the inner circle. So I said, I couldn't give her um, the solution to how, how to grow her business or how to get out of the solution she was in. And immediately when I was done speaking, the rest of the group chimed in with specific action steps that she could do in terms of marketing and networking and all these other things. Well, it turns out I got her bad results back because she took my advice. She took the assessment yesterday. I was able to review her scores today and I have a meeting with her later this week. And if she does any of those things, she will break her business and she will probably put herself out of business. Sean, you didn't hear the first half of this story and I don't think you need to because that's so common. Welcome and tell us you're a little late here. What's going on, my man? I'm late. Yes. Sometimes the universe needs us in different places. I was over in a different room uh, building something magnificent that I can't wait to tell everybody about inside our room at some point. But changing the world, Brandon, changing the world. But so the world. let me guess. Somebody came to you and said, uh, what I really need is more leads, marketing, more, 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 all these things, because more money solves everything. More Obviously. clients, the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. And had they pumped that influx of clients into a broken system, they would have destroyed themselves. Is that what I'm hearing? You know what? It's like you've done this before. Is that <laughs> what I'm hearing from you? But it's like <laughs> everyone does this all the time. So we're poking fun, but we're also going, I get it. I get it. Yeah. It's okay. Everybody's chasing the wrong thing. You're going about it a little off. So it's natural. Doesn't mean once you hear it that you have any excuse for continuing on in such a crazy, reckless fashion. But yes, for a minute, it's okay. We've all done it. It's a very seductive lie that the success of giants paint for us. But that's the path to get where they are. It is a long uphill slog the whole way that way. But I don't want, I don't want to jump in the middle of your jam. You were doing the jam was over. Thing. It was that. It was your business is broken. You don't know why. We can tell you that was harsh. I'm sorry. All business is broken. It's not your business is broken. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to talk about today on the inner circle. Um, so I, I dropped the uh, some little nuggets here that we're going to talk about execution um, and operate. So we got two minutes. Is there anything you want to say about operate in the harmonious business architecture before we hop on over there and jam out with our awesome clients. So we're now at the place. This hangs up a lot of people with the greatest plan in the world. Doesn't do anything. If you can't operate, I'd rather you be able to operate effectively with no plan <laughs> than have the world's greatest plan and not be able to take any steps. It's nothing. It's worthless. It's rotting in a box. You need to be able to effectuate your mission. Now, better if we start there, clean up your mission, vision, core values, get you hyper-focused, you know how to navigate, and then we execute. But so here's where we start running the race, Brandon, and we will find out. As you start to run that race, you'll quickly figure out whether or not you got that, your navigation dialed in. And then we move into modify and on from there what you do but i'm excited for today this is where people start to move good cool that's it that's we're gonna I'm jump at. in we're wrapped up next week sean told you talking about modify we're gonna go deeper on that what that means in the harmonious business architecture 
We got people to serve. We're going to have laughing. We're going to have tears. We're going to have high fives virtually, of course, in the inner circle. I hope to see you there. Join us, whatif.com slash inner circle. And we'll see you next week on the live screen. We're out. Play us in. Peace.